There's going to be a video show on my 1972 Mark 1 GEC 746 clone. This is a private variant of the 746. We're talking about Mark 1 cases. It has a little slope edge. Go down to the switch hooks. And the hands that can actually walk about on the hooks. And there was a thing you can say, um, rumor by G GPO, you can't place that hands on a switch and on a, in a funny angle, it won't hang up. But I've not been able to do it. This is a Mark II case. The Mark IIs have a raised bump on there. Locks the hands into place. The what I mean about clone in phones, it means a private made phone for a private system what was a copy of the GPO. This is uh, original. GPO 746L. This is also a Mark 1. This is a proper GPO one. This is a GEC one. Now, as I picked this one up um, off Aussie eBay for, um, in Adelaide, this is where it came from, this might have come off the railways because GEC are quite famous of displaying telephone lines for our railway system. God, if I find my bell. Now, all over our railway system, I have seen loads of these. These GEC type mechanical bells. I've got four of these. Um, I've seen in so many stations, these are on in the signal boxes. <laughs> Like from the ticket office in South Australia, you see that sending out ticket booth. Yes, you actually can see one of these hanging on the wall. I've been in Lady House in the box like many years ago now before the station closed. I saw two of these on the wall. Um, when I got to go in Glen Huntley's box so many, many, many years ago, they had one of these on the ceiling. And outside Flinders Street, Liverpool Street box, no, Liverpool Street station, they've got one of these on the wall as well. These are common found in signal boxes. So I reckon this one may have come off the Aussie Railway, this one. It came with original dial label well, I still got, but this is a copy I did on my photocopier, um, so I can keep that original label, so I don't have to ruin the original one, but this is a copy of the new one, of the original. Uh, slightly modified this phone, but not really a modification, but it's just put a bit of mesh in, you can't really see, I put a bit of mesh in there, stop all type of bugs going in this phone. Um, it's got GEC written on it. Now, I'm going to take this apart and I'll show you inside. That's not the original screw. Um, it didn't come with a screw in this one. Now, the difference to the GPO ones, to these, um, I don't think I do have a circuit board somewhere in here, but I don't know where I've put it. They don't have the the regulator, um, the regulator, and the um, um, the little light bulbs, step down light bulbs. I don't know what they're called. Um, can't take your number. Um, I'm referring to. It's a lot of broken switch hook on it. I'm referring. It doesn't have these in it. This inside. All these little light bulb type things. These little neons. I can't even what they call them in the GPO world. But these don't have it in these phones. But these don't have a regulator. It has got a paster inside. GC746 without regulator. When I'm talking about creepy calls going inside my phone. It happens all the time in this phone. I have phones in here. But there's no nuisance. But um. Well, you see the mesh I put in there, but it didn't really work. But the copy just got through the bells. What I have to do is put some where the bells are. But so that's the case, it's Mark One case with the new type of basil as well. The basils do come off, and I will explain that in this video. There you go. Basils do come off. I've never taken this off before. Um, some early GEC clones, I'm pretty sure would have had the numbered dial basils as well. But I'm not 100% sure. But here's one here, a GPO7, oh, it's GEC706 clone that had the numbered dial basils around the edge. But this one does not.
This one's fully working. I've tested it, but I don't have a junction box on the end. I've been hunting over UK eBay um, since I got this for a junction box for this, but I've never come across one. But what they would look like, um, like these, but with GEC written on it because GEC ones, because I know someone in my get ones video and he had a similar one to that arm um, phone there. He had GEC written on his junction box. But that one's a one from 1960, that's why it's got a dial 12 on it. I actually featured this in this video actually while I got this one out. Um, this, I'll show you this one off first. The, the, the standard is number 746. The, um, the line cord's not original either because the previous owner had cut the wire in half. But this is a genuine one. This was actually given to me um, thanks to Andy, who does the Andy Shed channel. We um, he, we did a swap of telephone parts um, a couple of years ago. I actually was going to use this on my 741, 741 wall phone. It was a GEC phone. I wasn't using that, but I decided not to stop it for, because I got this one in the post. Four years on here to get this phone complete. Um, this is the 746 type phone. Actually, I'll feature that in a second video after this one, but this is the, I'll put this one back together. Now, I need a pain to put that together. Um, all my British phones I actually have, I'm actually going to do a video of an N1900 as well. Um, they all wired in the original way, they're not being rewired because the way my system works, we don't have ring capacitors in the phone, so the way that my system works, I've got to have the ring capacitor in the phone working. Like these things here, I'm referring to. Put the screen to the back before I forget. This is actually a G. Um, PMG screw actually, they fit these 746 phones quite well. Um, but that's a video showing my 1972 Mark 1 GEC 746 clone.